Hey there, it's Bree, and these are my recent reads. So if you are a subscriber, you know that I've been gone for about a week. I think last week I only posted one video and that was pre-recorded because last week I was on vacation, which means that I did not get a recent reads video up last week. So this recent reads video will encompass far more days than I usually include. It's going to be from May 16th to June 6th. However, there is one book that I read during that time frame that was part of one reading blog, and then there are several books that I read. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six of them that I read while on vacation, and on Wednesday or sometime later this week, I'll be posting my vacation reading blog, so I'll talk about those books then. But I am going to talk about all of the other books that I read during that time frame. Let's just jump right into it because there are quite a few books here. For those 22 days, I read a total of 17 books. Like I said, I'm not going to talk about all 17 of them in this video. I'm going to talk about them in the order that I read them. So the first one was Damaged Goods. It's Ravenswood, book number 1.5 by Talia Hibbert. I apologize if the sound was off earlier because I had my microphone like in the wrong spot, but the microphone's in front of me now. It's fine. It's fine. We're moving on. Anyway, so like I said, I love Talia Hibbert so much. I'm pretty sure that this series is indie published and her Brown Sisters series might be the only series that she's written so far that is traditionally published. In either way, it's still both, both of them are good. I think I may even no, I love the Brown Sisters series. I was going to say I like her indie published series better, but I don't think that's true. I, I love the Brown Sisters series. So so much but there are a lot of things that if you like the brown sisters series you'll love this like if you need more and because you've read all three of the brown sisters series books like i did and you want more definitely jump into this series one thing that is consistent between her indie published and her traditionally published which i was kind of surprised about because usually this changes is that her steamy scenes are always so freaking good so this book keep in mind has a lot of trigger warnings in it it the main one is domestic abuse the heroine is pregnant with a baby from her previous relationship i can't remember if they're married or not. Um, they were either married or engaged, but he was extremely abusive and awful. And so she's kind of running away and she goes to like this beach town where she grew up and she runs into this guy who she knew as like in like her teenage years and they had this like summer fling and then she never really talked to him again and it ends up being a second chance romance with that guy. While she's pregnant and has run away, she runs into him again and the sparks fly again and everything's great and it's really, really, really good. I love the hero in this one. He's very protective of her and he takes care of her really well. Even though she's pregnant, they still start up another relationship and I... I was a little, because I didn't read the back of this book because I knew that I wanted to read it because it's Talia Hibbert. So I didn't know what it was about, but when I started reading it and I saw that she was pregnant right away, I was like, how is this going to work in a relationship? But I actually really ended up liking that. I don't normally like surprise pregnancies, but I wouldn't necessarily categorize this as a surprise pregnancy because she's pregnant from the beginning and it's not a surprise. And I'm sometimes iffy about kids in romance novels, but in this case... I actually really liked it. It lent itself well for the storyline and it was really, really good. So highly recommend this, highly recommend this series. You don't have to read it in order. All right, and then I ended up reading More Than Words by Mia Sheridan. I adore Mia Sheridan. She wrote one of my favorite books, which is Archer's Voice, and I have been wanting to read her entire backlist. I happen to have this on my bookshelf, so I decided to pick this one up. This was really, really good. I didn't love it as much as I love some of her other books, so I ended up giving it four stars. It's a childhood's friends to lovers, like second chance romance situation. The hero and the heroine both have very shaky childhoods, and the hero is abused by his father. The heroine's parents like fight a lot and it's very, very like it, it definitely has been a traumatic experience for the heroine because her father would like cheat and her mom would like go crazy about it and like bring the kids to go like find him while he's cheating. It was it was intense. But anyway, so she runs away to not runs away, but she like kind of escapes to like this abandoned train and that's when she sees the hero when they're kids but she lives in like this fantasy world like she's very much lives in her head and has this huge imagination she kind of brings him with her into these imaginative worlds and they listen to music and she's actually the one who kind of introduces him to music and it turns out when he becomes an adult he actually becomes a very famous composer 
who writes scores for, I think, movies. And he ends up being really famous and really successful, but they lose touch because at one point, all of a sudden, like, he's not there at the train meeting her, like, after school, like they normally do. And so she thinks she's never going to see him again, but then they see each other again in Paris when they're older, and he has kind of spiraled a little bit, and she's just working as a waitress. She's kind of finding her footing and everything too, but they both have kind of carried torches for each other that entire time. There was an aspect in this. I didn't love it, and I'm not sure if it's because it's believable or not. I'm going to put spoilers here. I don't know if it's, it might not be a spoiler, but if you like to go into books blind, then maybe skip like fast forward through this, but you find out that the hero doesn't know how to read and he never learned how to read even as an adult, even as a successful adult, he somehow has found ways to get around having to read. And I just couldn't find that believable. I don't know if that actually happens. I mean, maybe it does. It probably does, especially like in certain situations, but for his situation, I don't know that I necessarily believed that. Like I, I had a little bit of trouble believing that part of it, but it was a big part of the story. That's why I deducted a star because I was kind of, you know, I had a hard time buying into that. And it was a big part of like the conflict in it and everything too. So I was kind of eh about it. But anyway, I did really like this book. It's very atmospheric. And of course, the romance is great because it's Mia Sheridan. And I definitely will continue attempting to read her entire backlist. And then I ended up picking up Make a Scene by Mimi Grace. How freaking adorable is this cover, by the way? This is totally a book that I read because of the cover. Like I had wanted to read it because of the cover. I ended up giving this book four stars. It was super, super cute. This is a fake dating romance. It has an adorable meet cute and it's between a gym owner like he owns a boxing gym and she owns the bakery next door it reminded me a little bit of like kiss my cupcake in that respect but it wasn't really enemies to lovers it was just fake dating so the heroine her ex is marrying her cousin and she has to go to a wedding and so she needs a date to the wedding and the hero they end up running into each other because they work right next door to each other and they end up doing this negotiation over a parking space like she's going to I think let him use her parking space or something and he's gonna like fake date her so that she doesn't have to answer like get all the like pathetic looks that everyone's gonna give her when she goes to this wedding and everything so he ends up going to the rehearsal dinner with her and all like the preliminary stuff even staying at her grandma's house before the wedding and everything and obviously it slowly starts developing into more and the only reason why I deducted a star is because somewhere in the middle, like it lost me a little bit and I'm not really sure why, but then after a little bit, it like drew me right back in again. So I don't know, I had to deduct a star just because for some reason it lost me toward the middle. Maybe it could have been a little bit shorter. I'm not sure, but this is definitely an author that I want to read more of. I haven't looked at this author's entire backlist, but I plan to because this was really, really cute. I also really liked the family relationships in this, especially the heroine and her grandmother. I loved her relationship with her. It was really cute. And then I read Drag Me Up. It's Gods of Hunger, book number one by RM Virtues. This is a new to me author who I discovered because someone that I follow liked one of their tweets. And I noticed that this was a book that they wrote. This is a Hades and Persephone reimagining and it's a contemporary and Hades actually owns like a gambling den. And it felt very much to me like a mafia romance or like a mobster type romance. It had those kind of vibes. And what was interesting in this one is it didn't necessarily follow the story of Hades and Persephone. It more was like using their personalities and just their relationship, but it had all the other like side characters in it, like Zeus was in it, Demeter was in it, like all of those. They had Poseidon, everyone. And I'm so interested to read the rest of the series because I must know, like especially Poseidon, I need to know Poseidon's story. But it ended up being really, really good. Very, very unique take on this story. There's, there's also trans representation. The heroine is a trans woman. And I loved how that, I loved how that was talked about. And I loved how Hades handled that too. And just like the internal dialogue. And it wasn't like a big, like big part of it. It was just, you know, kind of just worked into this, into the story. It's also Hades is such a worshiping hero in this. Oh, I freaking love. That was my favorite part of this. As is typical, anytime I read books like this, the relationship was my favorite part. I really just wanted the romance in it. There was a lot of other things going on in the background, which Honestly, sometimes that bothers me. Sometimes I mind that, but I honestly didn't really mind it in this particular book for whatever reason. I think because it was just so interesting and I was interested in all the like background stuff that was happening. The one reason, so I ended up giving this four stars and 
The main reason is because of how it's written. It is written in, and I might get this wrong <laughs> because grammar, but I believe it is written in third person present, which threw me off a little bit because I feel like third person isn't usually written in present tense. And so it's hard to get used to a little bit. Not that the writing was bad. The writing was actually really, really good, but I didn't love the third person present. I would have rather it been first person present and then switch point of views if it was going to be in present tense. So I don't know. I didn't love that part of it. And I know that some people going into this reading it might give up on it because of that. But I highly recommend you just push through it because you really do get used to it. And I really liked it. And I can't wait to read the other books that this author has written. I think there's only, I think they came out with one other book recently. I think this is, maybe there's only two. I know that RM Virtues is currently writing a mummy romance, like the mummy of romance about the mummy. And I'm so excited. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of Helena Hunting books in my wrap up because I read a lot of Helena Hunting books recently. The next one that I read was Making Up. It's Shacking Up book number four by Helena Hunting. So funny thing about this, this is another series that I've read completely out of order. <laughs> and I like, it was totally unintentional too. I remember I read the second book first and then I realized it was part of a series. So I went back and read the other one. You don't have to read this in order. You're not going to get lost if you don't read it in order. So it was totally fine. I adore this series. It's so freaking good. I think I gave all or most of these books five stars. I never gave a book in this series lower than four stars. Obviously, it's a rom-com. It's Helena Hunting. She writes rom-coms really well. She also writes like kind of dramatic books pretty well too, but I love her rom-coms. This one... <laughs> was adorable and full of hilarious awkward moments because the heroine is a clerk at an adult store in Las Vegas and then the hero is part of the family that's like pretty wealthy and everything and he comes into her store that store because he's buying he like got he pulled the short straw and had to buy things for a bachelor party that he's going to and it's just, it's hilarious how they meet. And I just, I love her personality. Like she's just so quirky and everything. She's not quite as quirky as like Violet from Helen Hunting's Pucked series, but she still has a little bit of quirkiness to her. And it was really, really good. Adorable. I love it. And then I ended up picking up The Chase. It's Briar U book number one by L. Kennedy. So I know that this is a spinoff of the series that has, that's, I think the first book is The Deal by L. Kennedy. And I only ever read the first book in that series because I feel like a lot of people really like that series and they really like the spinoff series of it. However, I didn't like The Deal was good. I liked it. I liked it a lot, but it wasn't like obsessively good and I didn't feel the need to move on in the series. I probably will eventually. And I will definitely move on in this series because um, I, I gave this book five stars. I really liked it, but I don't think that you need to read the other series first because this is just a spinoff. I am sure it references other characters from that series, but I don't know. Anyway, so I finally read this book. I Why did I read this? I don't even remember why. Oh, because I think I had it on my Kindle or something and I just like was browsing my Kindle to see what to read next and I just randomly picked this one. This is a sports new adult romance. It's a hockey romance. The hero is a hockey player. What I loved about this is that the hero, even though the hero is like a hockey player, he's not really a jock, if that makes sense, because he's much more nerdy. He's like a computer geek, like a gaming geek. He likes to create games, like build games. That's what he wants to do. But he's like got tattoos. He's a little broody. But I love that he's kind of nerdy. And it's definitely grumpy sunshine because the heroine is definitely the type of person that super rich, privileged cheerleader type of heroine, like party girl type. And he is the complete opposite. So it's definitely opposites attract. It's absolutely adorable. I loved it so much, especially if you like Grumpy Sunshine. I think you'll like that book. All right. And then the next books that I read were books that I all read during my vacation. So we're going to skip over those and I will talk about them in my vacation reading blog. Next, I read Love Under Quarantine by Kylie Scott. I randomly bought this because I think it was super cheap on Audible. So I bought it when they had the sale. Been in my Audible library for a while and I wanted to read something kind of like short and easy. I picked up this one. I really liked the beginning of this and then it kind of lost me toward the middle and the end. So I ended up giving this book three stars. Obviously, this is a quarantine book. This came out a while, like a few months ago, actually. Like it, it was one of the first books that I saw that was about quarantine and about like coronavirus and stuff. So I thought that was really interesting, but obviously the world is on lockdown and it takes place, I guess, right when lockdown like happens. 
And the hero and the heroine live next door to each other. I think the hero is actually house sitting for a friend of his who's like overseas. She lives in the apartment next door. And then they see each other out on the balcony, which is such a cute premise. And it's done really, really well where it lost me. It felt like a slow burn at first, like they were slowly starting to develop this friendship and this rapport. And then all of a sudden they were like immediately obsessed with each other. I don't know, it felt like there was a really big jump between slowly moving toward a relationship to all of a sudden I'm in love with you. So I don't know, it lost me a little bit and then I didn't really care toward the end of it and I was kind of just half paying attention toward the end. So I found this book to be kind of meh, even though I really do like Kylie Scott. So I did give this book three stars. And then I picked up Sleepless Over You by Sydney Smith. It's a Sleepless in Seattle retelling, kind of. So it's a play on Sleepless in Seattle. The main character, he is listening to a podcast and it's like true love stories type podcast. And this girl is on the podcast and she's talking about her dad and how her dad's husband um, died of cancer and she's talking about her dad and like the main character he's like listening to this and falling for her dad because of this story and so he ends up kind of <laughs> like stalking him a little bit and ends up finding out more about him and finding out like where he works and everything because he's an equestrian veterinarian they end up doing the whole like meet me on top of the it's like the new york version of sleepless in seattle so they end up meeting on top of a famous building in new york that i forgot <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a cute it was cute it was just kind of eh. like I wasn't super invested in the romance because I didn't really get why he immediately fell in love with him because of that story so I wasn't fully invested in it but it was adorable and it was short and cute then I ended up reading Sweet Talk It's Love Lines Number 2 by Cara Bastone I actually didn't know about this book or maybe I saw it in passing but I don't know that I was going to jump to read it, but one of my channel members had recommended this book to me for one of my reading vlogs, but I didn't get a chance to get to it. So I ended up adding it to my May TBR and I freaking loved it. It was so good. I think I, do I like this one more than the other one? Call me maybe, I don't know. Either way, I've decided I need to read more of Cara Bastone's book. She doesn't have a lot of books out yet, so I think it'd be pretty easy to get through all of her backlist, and I am determined to do that because this was so cute. I am very interested to see what like her full-length novels are because this is an Audible original and it's short, but it's the kind that has like the sound effects and everything in the background. So I know that her other books don't have that, but I'm very interested to see what like her full-length books are about. So this one is adorable because it's a wrong number romance. The hero, he's dyslexic and he also has some other learning disabilities. And I guess like when he's putting people's phone numbers in his phone, he sometimes will just put like a bunch of random letters in place of their name and then he'll go back later and change their name. And that's that's what he did with her when he had first met her. And so he never went back and changed her name so he doesn't know what her actual name is. And he meant to call his sister or voice text his sister and he accidentally voice texted her like in the middle of the night because he, he couldn't sleep and it was like a, are you up or what are you doing type of thing? And she's like, why? And she knows who he is because she has his phone number and she knows who he is. So she's like, yeah. Yeah, like this is weird. And then when he realizes he's texted the wrong person, he's like, oh, I just, your name was next to my sister's name. Like, who is this? And then she ends up like not telling him. So it's not, it didn't feel catfishy though, which was nice. It was just, it was super, super cute. And there's like a good reason why she doesn't want to tell him. And the conflict was really, really good. But he is such a cinnamon roll hero. And I was obsessed with him, obsessed with him. And she's a badass heroine. It's so good. And then, of course, the audiobook is amazing because it has the sound effects in the background. You really feel like you're in the city with them. And it, there's so many cute moments in this, which really made me want to read more of this author's books. And then I picked up Sorted by Nikki Sloan. I knew that this was going to be a d dark romance. And I knew that Nikki Sloan doesn't usually write dark romances. She will write like taboo romances and things, but not necessarily dark romances. And it was nice because in the beginning of the book, she does have like a warning. She's like, this is not for everybody. And I would like to echo that. This book is not for everybody. There are going to be a lot of people who do not like this book. If you have problems with dubious consent or like no consent, there's rape and the hero rapes the heroine in this in the very beginning of the book. Like that happens in this book and he's the hero they end up together. So if that is not your cup of tea, do not read this book. Avoid this book at all costs. But Nikki Sloan just said, you know, she's like, I don't normally write books like this, but she's like, I couldn't get this storyline out of my head and I had to write it. And 
I actually ended up liking this. I gave it four stars because it was really hard for me to get invested in this relationship because of what happens between the hero and the heroine in the beginning of this book. And also the hero's like very overprivileged and she's like the virginal heroine and everything. But Nikki Sloan still has a way of writing really great romances. And I like how she writes. I like her writing style. So I enjoyed reading this, but also it was hard for me to be connected to this relationship because of what happens in the beginning. If you like super taboo books, if you like super dark books, and if you like Nikki Sloan, maybe give this book a try. All right, guys, that's it. Those are all the books that I read recently. Let me know down below what you read recently, if you read any of these books and what you thought of them. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy reading.